I am doing what's called an industrial PhD, which means it's sponsored by a company. And my case is actually sponsored by two companies, Oticon, who manufacture hearing aids, and Novo Nordisk, who make medical devices to, to help people inject insulin. Both these companies have a problem and nobody wants to use their products. So I'm trying to think of ways now and develop concepts to demedicalize the devices in some way. I'm working in developing design methods to involve what we're calling the pre-users of medical devices um, in design and innovation processes. I wanted to like, explore doing design research as a designer in, in a practice-based context as opposed to um, in a, an artificial academic context. And the industrial PhD is a great setup for doing that. I think one of the... I feel the sort of courses I've been doing here and the supervision support I've got are of high quality. Type two diagnosis. The general sort of research culture that I have access to here in design is fantastic. Yeah. Got some of the, in the participatory design and co-design, some of the best names in the world are working in Denmark or in Sweden. So that's just over the water and really easy to access. So one of the things about doing a PhD here um, compared to other countries is an industry PhD is highly valued here. So it's not just seen as an academic qualification. It's seen as something where you, you can bring some specialist knowledge and some unique skills. After I finished the PhD, I, actually, I, mean, I went to go work in commercial areas again, but it's something related to my PhD. I feel like there's quite a few options in Denmark. Because I'm enjoying it so much, I'm planning on staying here. I've got an age, I've got a unique qualification. And also the fact that I've worked for these two companies who are well known internationally in their areas would make a big difference if I wanted to my job prospects internationally.